Amen. Amen. Lift up both hands to heaven. Give God thanks for being in his presence this morning. Let's thank him for who he is. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your blessings upon your people. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Every heart said, Amen. 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 And Amen. If you're expecting for a word from heaven this morning, give him some praise. For I have received of the Lord, which I will also deliver unto you. For he pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save those that believe. For those of you who have your Bibles, I need you to get your pen out this morning. I need the musicians to join their families. This is an important sermon. I need you to join your families this morning. We enjoy the instrumentation, but this is, this is the reason why we're here. Brother Ron, we're not going to steal your guitar. You can put it there. Okay. And we're going to have to get you a stand. Amen. Let me keep you seat for a minute. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We thank you that you have allowed us into your sanctuary one more time. Heavenly Father, we understand that some people went to bed last night, but they didn't wake up this morning. Yet, we woke up not because of the alarm, but because of your love. We pray now as we share your word with your people. Let each one have an impartation. Let each one have an encounter. And we shall forever give you praise and give you glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Count it down by faith. Amen. 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 And amen. Give God some praise. From the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, we are going to read three verses in King James. We're going to read 6, 7, and 8. And there will be other scriptures as we go along. So permit me a few minutes of your time. Please do not be in a hurry. When we go to the hospital, they tell us we are patients. Mm -hmm. We sit there and we wait for Dr. Only to come. He takes his time coming, but we wait because we are patients. Because he has the answer that I need, so I'll be patient. God has the answer you need, so be patient. <laughs> Romans 12, verses 6 through 8. Having then gifts, deferring according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the prop proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Verse 8. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let us rest there and talk on the topic of operating in the power of the Spirit. Paul, writing to the church in Rome, is explaining the gifts. Now, there are seven gifts uh, that operate in and out of the church. There's those seven gifts lead to manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Hmm. When we are born, we have our father's attributes and some of our mothers and some other stuff. Hmm. 
The left-handed child didn't make themselves left-handed. Neither did the right-handed child make themselves right-handed. Mm -hmm. In this scripture here, Paul says there are seven gifts that operate. Some are given to prophecy, some ministry, some teaching, exhortation, mercy, leadership. Every one of us, when we were growing up, played in the playground. Now these days, they play on the computer. <laughs> Those of us from the previous generation, we went outside to pray to play. Somehow, some kid emerged the leader. He wasn't the biggest. He wasn't the smartest. But somehow, everybody deferred to his leadership. Where did he get that from? Gifted. Some kid will have answers that you don't know where they got him from. One of my granddaughters says, I, just, I don't know where I got it from. I just know it. We term that to be a joke. But the truth is, they are gifted in that thing they do freely. Now, I need you to pay rapt attention this morning. For everyone alive that got put into this world at this time and any time, they have a gift from God to serve their generation. But your gift comes easy to you and you take it for granted. When you take it for granted, you don't... <laughs> You don't serve God with it. You serve your own interest and you enter into a popularity contest. You have missed God, sir, ma'am. The prophecy that you are given to is to prophesy in truth according to God's word, not for you. Hmm. We, we talk about the blessings of God. And we don't understand why, for the gift he gave me, I'm charging somebody for my gift that I didn't give me. Y'all don't hear me this morning. This is an example. Hear me, hear me. The three people that play instruments are accomplished in their right. They have a right to charge anything they want. Not one single one has mentioned money. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> but I want you to look behind their lives and see what's happening in their homes. The things that used to be wrong are being corrected. I know I'm preaching. Some things you haven't even touched are being fixed. And you wonder, how, what, what happened here? Because the gift he gave you to serve him, you're serving him, so he's taking care of your business. Let me leave you alone. The gift we have, we receive by grace. <laughs> I was talking to Brother Williams in the back. And I said, you know, I'm gifted to teaching. Simple. Do you know why? I'm the slowest learner. Uh, Y'all don't hear me. I ask more questions than I have answers. So the way I teach is the way I get it. Well, why is this? Well, this one, well, what about this one? Until I get it, I can't give it. Y'all don't hear me. Your gifting... <laughs> When you do the thing you do, it's easy for you. Listen to me. I haven't even started preaching yet. The Bible says that your gift will make room for who? For itself, not for you. 
So why is the gift making room for itself, not you? Mm -hmm. Because it's not yours. Let me, let me quit. Let me quit. The giftings we have in the prophecy is by grace. When we were giving birth to, God knows that humans need help. Remember I told you, God asked the animals, I have a gift for humans. Where should I put them? The whale said, give it to me, I'll take it to the bottom of the sea. God said, no, they will invent submarines. The eagle says, give it to me, I'll take it to the highest mountain. God said, no, they'll learn to fly. The little mole that operates under the surface of the soil said, put it in man, he won't look there. <laughs> the gift things we are looking for are in us. But I'm looking at somebody else's gift and I'm not taking care of mine. Y'all don't even hear me this morning. Because what I have is needed in the world, by God he put it in me. But because I'm looking at her and I'm looking at her gift, I want that gift. Mine is rusting. It's not making room for itself. Thereby, I am suffering, I'm jealous, I'm envious. I told Brother Branson, let me sing this morning, he won't give me the mic. <laughs> because that's not my place. Hear me, hear me. So the seven gifts that I talked to you about, prophesying. Did you know prophesying is only declaring the truth? But that's your gift, right? <laughs> but the guy down the street said, hey, I hear you prophesy to people, prophesy to me. I'll give you $20. <laughs> your gift now has no value. You don't hear me. Soon as the man gives you the money, God can no longer pay you for the gift he gave you to serve him. The ministry, which is service, did you know it was is just practicing the truth? To service people means I practice what the Bible has told me. I'm trying to ravel this thing for you. We live a complicated life that is actually simple. Look, find your gift, stay in it, grow in it, and watch God show up in your life. Sound like something you got to go to college for, right? <laughs> Not here, you don't. The teaching. The person gifted in teaching is just explaining the truth. That's what we do. The exhortation, which is encouraging. I'm only applying the truth. Okay. When the guitarist plays. He's expressing how he feels about God through his guitar. The drummer is doing the same thing. The keyboardist is doing the same thing. The one with the mic is doing the same thing. Why? So our spirits can be lifted. So we can receive from God. Okay. This morning's preaching is hard. Look. For a chef to cook, there has to be fire. Hmm. <laughs> For the fire to get hot, there needs to be. Okay. But inside the pot, what's in the pot? Mm -hmm. If I have to fry anything, the grease has to be hot. When the grease is hot, if I put anything in it, all here, shh. And it don't take long to get done. You don't hear me this morning. <laughs> when they play what they do in fullness of God, your spirit gets raised. When I deliver the word to you, you're on fire. But if they don't do what they do, you can't hear me. 
You don't already hear me anyway. It talks about the giving. Just supporting the truth. That's all it is. This truth that I believe I'm going to support it. That's why you write your check. Because you believe the truth. So which one do you like doing? Now I'm going to give you a measure, okay? This one is simple. I'm simple-minded. So I got to teach a simple-minded way. So how do I know which one is my gift? Aha, uh -huh. I'm glad you asked. Did you know that the leader, the leader is just organizing the truth? Hmm. Do you know that? You think you have to have a degree and do this and that? The leader is just organizing the truth. One more thing. The seventh one says, mercy. <laughs> mercy is ministering the truth. Ministry is the same as service. <laughs> that means I know the truth and I need to serve you the truth. That's mercy. Because hmm, the gift you have that I don't have, I need mercy in it. Ooh. So if you don't help me with the things I can help myself with, me and you are in trouble. But can I tell you something else? These are seven natural gifts that we are in command of. These things that I just told you, I'm in command of. you in command of. But how do you know which one is yours? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're paying attention now. How do I know my gift? Simple measure. The effects of what you do to the other person. The effect on them that makes you happy is proof that's your gift. Do you want me to repeat that? The effect of what you have done to somebody else that gives you joy, that's your gift. Mm -hmm. If you sing and people walk away happy and you're glad they're happy, that's your gift. Is that simple enough? But there's a higher level to this thing. So, when I serve God, at my own will, complete submission to God, doing the truth I just shared with you. So how or what else can he do with me? This one is in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're not going to do that this week. That's next week. These are called the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. What I just gave you are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Everyone has one. Just find yours. The manifestations of the Holy Spirit are the ones that they talk about. The, the word of wisdom, speaking in tongues. That one is nine of them. Okay, let me explain the difference before I go any further. If you are gifted in healing, why are you not walking for the hospital and healing people all the time? Because that's not up to you. The manifestations of the Holy Spirit are different from the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are yours to wield any time. You can turn it any which way you want. The manifestations of the Holy Spirit are not yours. It is God's and God's decision only. He uses the Spirit to wield it through anyone who's ready to be used. Mm. There are people who are given to healing. They just come in your presence and you're healed. Why are they not in the hospital? Because it's not up to them. Hear me. Hear me well this morning. The gifting that you have that comes easy to you, that you make people happy and you're glad they're happy. Hear me now. This has nothing to do with monetary remuneration. Money is the lowest ebb of blessing. The Bible says your gift will make room for itself. Romans eleven twenty nine 29 says, The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. So that natural gift he won't take back. Hear me. 
He wouldn't take back. That's yours to keep. But you could get rich doing it for him. Don't charge man for what he gave you. Okay. Let me break it down another way so I can finish this. The gift that God gave you out of those seven are yours to keep and do whatever with. But for the manifestation to come through you, your gifting has to be dedicated to him all the time. The reason why some preachers are given to healing is because they have subscribed to that gift. They have done everything they can humanly do to be ready to get it. They can't go get it. Hear me now. It is the Holy Spirit's decision to pass it through them. But the vessel has to be ready. Are you fully committed to what God sent you to do in this world or are you doing your thing? Second Timothy, he says, in a great house, there are some golden vessels, silver vessels, on and on. He said, but those that purge themselves are ready to be used by the master. So how ready are you to be used by the master? That's the real gift. Let me quit. So your gifts, number one, natural enablement. You can turn it on and off. It's yours. It's like a car. Okay? You can turn it on and you can turn it off. You could drive a cab and make the money put in your pocket or give it to the owner of the car. That's up to you. But be careful what you do because it determines what happens next. <laughs> this gift flows naturally. Have you ever had a situation where this thing comes so easy to you, you're being offered money for it? Somebody's alarm is going off. It's person controlled. It's a gift of God, but it's person controlled. Whose favor are you controlling your gift in favor of? The gift he gave you. Are you trying to make man pay you for serving God with the gift he put in you? Thank God we have musicians who are not hung up on money. For brother only to come, he called me on the phone with him. He said, I play the bass. Can I play? No mention of money. Just wants to serve God. Brother Branch is a different story. Now, now hear me. Because the gift is given to us and we are in control. But remember, God created us with choices. Hmm. If you charge me $10 for the gift God gave you, and I give you $10, that's all you're going to get. Mm -hmm. But if you serve God with your gift before me, he will pay you more than the $10 multiplied a thousand times. Can you put up Deuteronomy 111, please? Deuteronomy 111. I want you to see this. Talking about gifts. The Lord God of your fathers make you how many times? How many times? Who's going to make you? God is going to make you a thousand times many more as you are and bless you and he had promised you. I'm not promising you anything. I can only give you what's in my pocket. But the streets of, gold, of, of heaven is paved with gold. What you and I are dying for, the streets are paved with gold. So how much can he give you for serving him with your gift? I'm not talking to my musicians. We're talking to everybody else. So this thing is by understanding that the gift he gave me is to serve him. I could choose to serve him or somebody else. Do you all remember Matthew 6.33? Mm -hmm. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and everything else, including that thing you are looking for. 
will be added unto you. Let me quit. How do I start? How do I start to recognize this gift? You got to be born again. Because it's the gift of the spirit, you can't get it outside the spirit. You might have it, you never come into it. <laughs> Until you're born again, you can't even identify what you do good. When you're born again, then the spirit will start to show you by the measures I've given you. The things you do for others, they are reaction that makes you happy, that gives you joy, is your gift. Do it again. As long as you do it, they give God praise. It gives you joy. That's your gift. Stay there. Find out about your gift. Walk on your gift. I didn't give it to you. So how do I protect this thing? How do I protect this thing that I now found out that God gave me? You put on the whole arm of God. I'm going to explain this arm of God differently this morning. Number one, you got to read. Hmm. Ephesians 6.14 says, Ephesians 6.14, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. We just talked about the truth, right? So my loins... Okay, I'm not wearing a flowing robe this morning. But in my culture, I think it was Mother's Day I wore my flowing robe. Sometimes they could get in your way. So you tie a belt, lift your clothes off your feet so you don't trip on it. You pull it up and you tie a belt so it holds it up. But that belt is your belt of truth. You don't differ from this. That's what's holding you together. Because if you let it go, you will trip and fall. Y'all yeah, don't hear me. <laughs> so I have to read to understand the truth. Number two, I must be reminded of the meaning of salvation in my life. What is that? Having the breastplate of righteousness. <laughs> if I remember that my righteousness is like filthy rags to God. Because the enemy will not attack, attack you in the things you're not gifted in. <laughs> He's only going to mess with you in the areas he knows you're gifted. But if you think as a human, you're already failing. Hmm. In Ephesians 6, what he said, having on the breastplate of righteousness. Not my righteousness, his righteousness. If I remember, he already died and rose. Don't matter what the enemy is saying. My gift is my gift. Number three. Find and, and pursue God's purpose for you. When you hear pursue, what does that mean? Movement, right? Movement. How many people go outside without shoes on? Mm -hmm. Here's what he says. In the scriptures. Ephesians 6.15. And your feet. Shod with the preparation of gospel of peace. So. If I know what my gifting is. And I'm clothed in his righteousness. And my gift is in his grace. Should I be moving? I should be moving with confidence. Number four. You got to meditate on the scriptures that reinforce God's faithfulness to you. And that is the shield of faith. Shield of faith. Ephesians 6, 16. It says, above all, taking the shield of faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery dirt of the enemy. Okay, someone get this this morning. No matter what your gift is. Let me put it this way. 
in your gift, to operate in your gift, it is the scariest entrance you're ever going to have. The cave that holds your gift is the scariest cave you will ever walk into. For those who are given to faith, you are so fearful, it's not funny. So what is faith? The evidence of things hoped for. Substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. So my noun faith means when I need to operate in my gift, I put up my shield of faith. Oh. <laughs> because the enemy is going to shoot at what God gave me. Number five. Let's retire too long. Confess your sins daily. Helmet of salvation. <laughs> Look. Nothing hinders a person like their conscience. Man is a triune being. He's a spirit that has a soul and lives in a temporary body. The soul can be destroyed. The spirit cannot. Hear me. Hebrews 4.12 says, The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. He said, It divides the soul and the spirit. Ooh, you all missed that. Because the soul can be divided from the spirit, so can it be divided from the body. My helmet of salvation is reminding me that the attacks of the enemy cannot break my head. I didn't give me salvation. God gave me salvation so I could protect the gift he gave me. Do you know what the opposite of responsibility is? Liability. You could be liable to yourself if you don't know your gift. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Success is no accident anywhere. It is programmed there's dedication, there's discipline. There's a few educators here. So when you don't do that thing that is needful to be done, you are a liability to yourself. Your teacher will fail you. It's not their fault, it's your fault. Because you did not show responsibility for what you were given. Ephesians 6, 17. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. First John 1 John 1.9, we all know what that says. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Number six, your thought. Take your thought captive. You have to take your thought captive to operate in your gift. Okay. If I play the guitar, I do the best I can to practice. Brother only comes around and he's plucking the keys like no man's business. That's him. I only learned two keys. Let me stay on that. When I get better, I let him teach me the third one. For now, I'm on two. Listen to me. Because when we enter, we enter at different phases of life. We are not where everybody is. But if you will be responsible for where you are, <laughs> one of the things in the kingdom is responsibility. You are responsible for your own salvation. Hmm. The gift has been taken. You are responsible to take it. If you don't take it, you are unsaved. The way you act, you are responsible for it. <laughs> the way you study, you are responsible for it. Even what you eat, you are responsible for. The Bible is there for you to read 24-7. You are responsible for how much of it you read. 
Uh, let me finish this. Take your thoughts captive. He said, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God is quick and powerful. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. So I have the capacity to take it and use it. The whole armor I've described to you, this is the only offensive weapon. But I cannot use this offensive weapon if I don't know what it is. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 says this. Casting down imagination. Someone hear me this morning. And every hard thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. I'm bringing it to captivity every thought to, be, to the obedience of Christ. So until I get, <laughs> until I take responsibility for what I'm thinking, somebody else is responsible. If they're responsible, I'm liable. Oh, you don't hear me. Lack of responsibility is liability. That's why they, take, they give you liability insurance. Let me quit. So the Spirit has given us gifts. It is your responsibility to discover your gift. It is your responsibility to operate in your gift. It is your responsibility to grow in your gift. Do you remember the story about the talent? Do you know what that was? Gifts. Gifts. If you sit on your gift, you can't encourage anybody else. Thank you, Lord. So Jesus came. And he lived this life. And he did the things he heard his father tell him to do. In Isaiah 11, verse 2, he said there were seven spirits upon Jesus. Mm -hmm. The seven gifts are in the world. But there were seven spirits that were upon Jesus that he operated in. The spirit of the fear of the Lord, the spirit of might, spirit of wisdom, on and on and on. But then he has given us these other spirits. These are the gifts for us to help one another. Would you help me find out what your gift is? And operate in that gift? Because until you operate in your gift, you're frustrated. Money does not frustrate you. Is the lack of operation of your gift. Y'all don't hear me. When you operate in your gift, money becomes irrelevant. This is a spiritual thing, folks. Money becomes irrelevant if you operate in your gift because the money will come. I'm not telling you something I'm guessing. The money will come. He says, if you seek the kingdom of God first. Let me explain this as we close. The kingdom of God is not out there. Kingdom of God is in my heart. Jesus. That means if I will internalize the kingdom of God and operate my gift to the benefit of the kingdom of God, the external things have no choice but to fall. Yeah. Rise to your feet. I don't know who's, who, who this sermon is for. Right where you're standing. Before we even share the scriptures about the anointing oil. Brother, only you can take your place. I need everyone who's still awake. <laughs> Who has been struggling not knowing what their gift is. I want you to pray a prayer. Tell God to open your eyes. To show you that thing you do for people. And they are happy. And you walk away joyful. Ready to do it again. Tell God to show you that thing. Pray that prayer right now. Pray that prayer. Tell God to open your eyes. Show me that thing you have gifted me. In these sevenfold gifts. That I might serve you. To the ultimate. That you might manifest your spirit through me. Because until you are dedicated to the gifts you are given, the Spirit is not going to manifest through you. People speak in tongues. Some pretend to speak in tongues. Some speak in tongues for real. It's a gift. Some interpret tongues. It's not going to come. 
until you are completely dedicated to God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Every heart said amen. 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 And amen. You may be seated for a few seconds. Today is our monthly anointing service. In the Old Testament, in Exodus chapter 30, you can read it on your own time, God told Moses how to formulate the anointing oil. He told him what to put in it. He told him what to do with it. But he, he also told Moses, this is for generations yet unborn. So it's not an Old Testament thing. Number one in the oil is the yoke destroying power of God. Isaiah 10, 27. In the Old Testament, the shepherds, when they take the sheep out into the field, they're sexy flies. Y'all don't have them here. They're very aggressive. And they go into ears and drive the sheep crazy. The sheep will run off the cliff and kill itself. So with a little bit of anointing oil on the sheep's head, the flies don't come. The flies are the enemies. Mm -hmm. Who's your enemy? Okay. So the, the sexy fly are kept away just by the anointing on the head. Amen. Every yoke that the enemy puts on us is really designed to drag us away from the gift God gave us. Because he knows if we get into our gift, he's in trouble. Number two, the Spirit of God is in the anointing oil. 1 Samuel 16, 3, 13, rather. He said, then Samuel took, we talked about Samuel last week, right? We know who he is. He took the vial of oil and poured it on David. The Bible records from that day forward, the Spirit of the Lord was upon David. Now hear me, it's, it's not a chemical product. David was the same David that God sent for in the wilderness. But as soon as the oil touched him, then the Spirit of the Lord stayed upon him. Number three, there's healing in the oil. That's New Testament now. James 5.14 says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. We are in the church now. And I'm considered an elder. And I have the anointing oil. He says, let them pray over him. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Saul was an ordinary man, number four. The children of Israel wanted a king. God told Samuel, anoint Saul for them. But Saul is going to abuse them. But anoint him anyway. The Bible records that Samuel, chapter 10 verse 1 says, took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him. I said, is it not because the Lord had anointed thee to be captain? So it's oil of enthronement. The things you're not qualified for, God can enthrone you on it by the anointing. In 1 Samuel 10:6, the Bible records that Samuel, after he anointed Saul and sent him away from him, he said, because of the oil upon your head, you are going to run into people who are going to worship. They are going to favor you without you opening your mouth. I don't know who I'm talking to. There's a favor you've been looking for from God. By the anointing, the favor will meet you on your way. Someone told Saul, you know the asses you've been looking for? It's already been found. They will favor you and you go home because your father is now looking for you, not the animals. You all don't hear me. Rise to your feet. I've read you and I've described to you 
What's in the anointing oil? I have no idea what you need. I don't know what you need from the anointing oil. Need you to close your eyes. We'll pray. Father in heaven, I've explained to your people the content of the anointing oil. Heavenly Father, I know you can do much more than I've explained through the mystery of the anointing oil. Lord, as they come forward willingly to be anointed, you do for them that you have spoken to their hearts you will do today. When we depart from here, Father, may we depart praising your holy name. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I don't know who's ready to be anointed. I'm going to do the altar call after the anointing. The name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, meet them at the point of what they need. The name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To the depths of my soul. The name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, I'm asking you to meet them. Break every yoke in this place. Whatever yoke is upon anyone in this congregation, Father, break it according to your word in the name of the Father. The Son and the Holy Spirit. Yes, Heavenly Father, we're calling upon your name according to scriptures. If there's any sick amongst us, heal them by the anointing. Break every yoke in this place, individually and collectively, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for what you're already doing in this place. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go back to your seat praying. I don't know what you need. Father, meet them at the point of their need. In the name of Jesus Christ, we're asking you, Father, bless your children this day. Let there be manifestations of your power in this place. In Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this place. Bless the children as we anoint them with the holy anointing oil. Father, thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, every yoke, mm, every healing, Father. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for what you are already doing. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Any of you want any of this? Oh, I could drink it. Come on. We're going to dance after this, so. Father, we thank you. As I anoint him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Open your right hand. Amen. Nope. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Don't play your instrument. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Open your right hand. Open your right hand. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Open your right hand. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Completely, yeah. My soul. Amen. Amen. The door of the church is open for the acceptance of members. Is there anyone here who would like to join membership with us? By letter. Of your candidate for baptism. We're going to talk with uh, Miss Pam and uh, Adeline. 
probably have baptism on Saturday up at Paragould. Is there anyone today? Right